Okay, so I want to be very clear when we start this video off. I'm no investigative journalist. I'm just seeing something online, doing a little bit of research, and presenting what I'm finding here. Obviously, there's no concrete evidence for anything. I'm not trying to start anything. I'm just having a conversation about something that I thought was interesting enough to have a conversation about. It's not that serious, it might not be real, it might be completely bogus. But today I wanted to talk about Matthew Barzal. Yeah, he's a guy who has actually had his fair share of the spotlight on this YouTube channel a ton especially in 2017-2018. And if you can kind of fill in the blanks as to why a Canucks fan would have been talking about Matthew Barzal in 2017-2018, then congrats, you know your stuff about the NHL awards. We had ourselves the entire Brock Besser, Matthew Barzal fight for the Calder that was going on in 2017-18, and as a result, we made a ton of videos talking about Barzal and Besser and these guys, and who was better, and ultimately I said that Barzal should have won the Calder, especially after Brock Besser's injury that year, but that indeed was the outcome that we saw. Matthew Barzal in that season was over a point per game as a rookie for the Islanders, getting 85 points in 82 games played. Absolutely ballistic numbers for a guy who, at the time, was literally only 20 years old. Like, that's absolutely incredible. A lot of Canucks fans, though, at that time would be quick to point out, oh, Barzal was playing on a stacked power play with Anders Lee and Josh Bailey and all these other guys, and he was a player who had a whole bunch of secondary assists, and not to mention the fact that you had another franchise talent in the New York Islanders system by the name of John Tavares that year. And so, leads us to our conversation here, where John Tavares is no longer a New York Islander, and we've actually chronicled the story as to how the Islanders, for some reason, got a lot better when they lost him. Not directly because of his loss, but because of the other stuff that went on in the Islander system after the fact. We know that John Tavares right now is the Toronto Maple Leafs captain after pretty much debating the entire Islanders fan base and media and community into believing that he actually had some incentive to stay on Long Island and as a result would not waive his no trade clause, not allow the Islanders to get anything for this guy, only to walk in free agency to the team that was his childhood dream. Islanders fans were very upset about this, and rightfully so. We had social media posts everywhere, we had the Dear John video that came out, and we had some comments that were made that I just recently saw yesterday. This is even why I'm making this video here. This is from the New York Islanders subreddit that I saw pop up on my feed. I randomly remembered this quote from Staple. Who do we think this was? My guess is Matthew Barzal. Attached is an excerpt from an athletic article talking about the fallout of the Islanders' John Tavares departure. This is what the quote says, In exchanging texts with a few Islanders players, the reactions range from surprise to disbelief when talking about Tavares leaving. I mentioned to one player that fans were posting videos of burning their Tavares jerseys. Don't blame them, was his reply. Now, the Reddit post is asking the question, oh, who said this quote, guys? Who do we think it was? I think it was Barzal, and there's no proof or anything, it's just a guess. And after reading this, I was kind of like, huh, interesting. Why would there be a guess that it would have been Barzal out of all people? That's an interesting one. Let's read the comments and try to understand where that guess is coming from. The first thread here says, Haha, for sure it was Barzal. Barzal legit hates the guy. I really hope they both make Team Canada's Olympic team for that reason. Dude, if they played on the same line, maybe Barzal would be more selfish with the puck and get a shooter's mentality. Probably not, since I'm sure he would put on representing his country over his dislike of Tavares, but a man can dream. And this conversation had me thinking, why do Islanders fans believe that Barzal doesn't like Tavares? Is there an entire side of the story that I'm missing out here? Firstly, there's another thread here. What has he done before? Notably, when John Tavares returned to the island, Matthew Barzal was the only guy who didn't give stick taps during the tribute video, and I read that and I was like, huh, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and try to look for a little bit more fuel to the fire in this whole Barzal Tavares thing. So I did a few Google searches, a few Twitter searches, and I found a few quotes from Matthew Barzal spanning the entire year after Tavares left, 
kind of take it a few shots here and there. Here's a light one from TSN, Frank Saravelli, talking about Barzal. What has been the one difference that you've noticed on your team from this year compared to last year? And Barzal says, no one is treated any differently. It doesn't matter who you are. Saravelli said that this kind of sounds like a shot against Tavares. Honestly, though, that's kind of weak in my opinion. That's from January 2019. The next one, though, is a little bit bigger. This is a quote from Matthew Barzal's interview on the 31 Thoughts podcast back in September of 2019. So a full year after John Tavares left the Islanders and went over to Toronto, all I want to do now, Barzal says, is play in the playoffs. Get back there, and that's where I want to be as a player. You don't want to be nine years in, and you've only made the playoffs two times. Ooh, man. Ooh, man. See, this is kind of why I'm saying I'm no investigative journalist. This is not proof or anything. This is just shade. Shade right here being thrown by Barzal. I know it was a year and a half ago. Shut up. I know that. But still, this is the first time I'm seeing this. And if you take a look at John Tavares and his game log with the Islanders, yeah, he had nine seasons in New York. He only made the playoffs three times, not twice, so there you go, Barzal, there's a little bit of a correction there. But it was indeed a quote said a year and a half after he left that kind of got people saying, oh boy, he's still kind of feeling it, eh? In fact, going over the entire Tavares versus Barzal angle a little bit more, around the same time as that quote with the I don't want to be in the league for nine years and only make the playoffs twice thing, we had ourselves some other quotes from Barzal talking about contract extensions. That was a really big thing back in the day, because, I mean, back in the day, it was only like a few years ago, because the offer sheet was on the rise. We had the Sebastian Ajo thing happen, and it had this entire discourse attached to it as to whether or not Barzal or any of the other guys, Rontanen or Kachuk or any of these players could get offer sheeted. And Barzal said this about the entire process in September of 2019. The contract thing isn't even on my mind. That will happen when it happens. I'm an RFA, not a UFA, so I'm not waiting to hit July 1st to see the market. It's more just when the deal gets done and it's right for both sides. I want to be here. And you know, I kind of like how he said that. I'm not going to wait till July 1st and wait to see what's on the market. Kind of like what somebody else did in this environment a few years ago. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stay here and I'm going to wait and I'm going to sign a contract because I know I want to be here. Now, of course, one may not say, oh, Lego, all this evidence you've brought up doesn't prove anything. And yeah, I agree. Definitely doesn't prove anything. I'm not making this video, as I said, to be some revolutionary guy who's discovered the truth behind whatever. That's not it. This is just a conversation. And as a result, it's very lighthearted. And I don't want anybody who watches this video to think that I'm going out there preaching to the world what is super secret information. But you got to admit, it's kind of funny, isn't it? Like, all this Barzal, Tavares stuff, a lot of the reason why Islanders fans were kind of okay with Tavares leaving in the way that he did was because they had Barzal. We had Islanders fans in November of 2019 chanting out to Toronto, We don't need you. We don't need you. Clap, 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 clap. And the entire Barzal's better clap, 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 clap thing that they would do as well. Might I remind you, the first time Matthew Barzal played the John Tavares Toronto Maple Leafs, he scored a hat-trick, and he doesn't really score all too many goals. So, yeah, good for him. Even though Matthew Barzal's in a spot where he had himself his best statistical year in his first season, 85 points, 82 games played, he's still coming out here as a consistently strong playmaker who can go out there and wheel it around the zone, take a few laps by himself because he's just that fast, and then find another guy out in front. Sure, he's not John Tavares, but come on. The Islanders are in a spot where Barry Trotz's defensive system has been working out so well that making the playoffs these two previous seasons and going to the gosh darn conference finals last year you guys are exhibiting a lot more success now than you ever had with John Tavares on the team. It's the entire reason we made that video before, the irony of the John Tavares signing for the Islanders and how they honestly don't really need him anymore. So even though Islanders fans may have been seen as just chanting, we don't need you as a way to try to hurt the guy, I think there are some Islanders fans that legitimately do believe that maybe they really don't need him. And for Barzal, hey, 
I wouldn't be surprised if he really just honestly didn't like the guy anymore, considering the way that Islanders fans are talking about him and considering some of the previous quotes that we have discussed. Of course, Barzal, whenever he's interviewed by the media, says all the right things. Oh, Tavares was a leader. We loved him in the room, this and that. We know all the basic stuff that NHL players like to do, but for Barzal, I mean, not stick tapping when Tavares returned, having those honestly shady comments towards the guy it's pretty funny, isn't it? So again, just a fun conversation to have here. Talk to me in the comments what you thought about this idea here. No shade, by the way, on my behalf to Barzal or Tavares. They're both great players. It's just the way this story coincides with both of them, I think, is really interesting. So talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this Vintage Rolls 99. And bye.